734 as we uh, roll through a Tuesday morning. Tomorrow is parade day, of course, and um, we are always happy to welcome on and say hello to Dave Trobert of the Kansas Policy Institute. Dave, I just want to get your thoughts on the last conversation we were having. I mean, all these school districts that are closed now tomorrow, to me, it's another example of the kids not being put first and not being made the priority. And instead, it's Super Bowl parades and everything else. What about you? Yep, you're, I, I agree completely. Um, it's Look, the system, um, would a lot of people, the adults, would like to see the kids do better, but not if it means they need to change their own behavior. Mm-hmm. That the system's needs always go first. The, I mean, academic achievement is just not what the system is focused on. They, they prove it time and time again. Before we get to the tax issue and the latest on that, um, let me weave this into a story that you guys had up here last mm-hmm. week about the Olathe superintendent touting a rebranding in an era of declining test scores. So Olathe was one of the schools yesterday that announced, yeah, we were going to have school Wednesday, but now, you know, I mean, well, it's a parade, so we're canceling school. Uh, What's the story here out of Olathe? What are they doing to try to basically make themselves look good? Well, again, the the, uh, academic achievement means nothing. About a third of their kids are below grade level. Um, And the district has embarked on this big rebranding campaign. They say they want people to somehow a new logo is going to be better for the district. Uh, they don't feel that the current logo and the branding is representative of their values. Well, you know, it, it would be really simple. The best way to attract people is to say, look, here are our results. We get results. They can't do that. So they distract attention and they want to put out, I, I don't know what's going to be in their branding, probably a lot of lofty things that halfway aren't true. But that's just, again, it's the way the system functions. It's irrelevant what's going on in student achievement. You don't need a new logo. They're going to spend so much time uh, doing this, that it, it and it's distracting from their mission. They, yeah. This is a district. This is a district that won't allow its board members to fulfill their legal obligation to go into each school every year meet with teachers and identify the barriers preventing kids from being proficient. And then what are the budgetary changes we need to make in order to overcome those barriers? They won't allow board members to do their legal responsibility, but they've got plenty of time to let's sit around and talk about a new logo. uh, Dr. Yeager, the superintendent out there, you're saying he won't let school board members who were elected by the people of Olathe He won't let them go into schools to talk to teachers about what can be done better? That's right. Wow. State law says the school board shall conduct these assessments. Olathe is one of many districts in the state where the system, the the administration, will not allow board members to participate. They want to just give them a staff-prepared report at a board meeting, say, here, take a look at it, sign off on it. So at what point, I mean, the board is elected by the people, right? Uh, The superintendent Mm -hmm. is not. But at what point then does the board have to grow a backbone and say, if the superintendent is not going to let us do the job that the people expect us to do when they vote for us, then we've got to get rid of the superintendent. Well, the problem is, in many cases, if you don't have a majority of the board willing to do that, there there were people on the Olathe board. There's people on many school boards who want to have this done, who we know have asked, look, let us go in and do that. And they're told, no, that's not your job. Just stay hmm. in your corner, be a cheerleader. We got this. Well, you don't. Hmm. It is because... They don't, and what it comes down to, Pete, is they have to change adult behavior. If you want to improve outcomes, adult behaviors have to change, and that's where a lot of school systems draw the line. We will not change our behavior. The system matters more. I see the Olathe logo here has always been kind of the the globe on an apple with Olathe around the 
globe that is within an apple, which is, you know, kind of creative school apple, you know, the apple on the desk kind of a thing. I'm not sure why a minute of anyone's time needs to be taken out to develop a new logo for the Aletha School District. I mean, what a waste of time and resources that is going to be. But uh, to your point, it's just a deflection. It is. It is. That's all it is. So, Dave, where are we right now on a potential flat tax in the state of Kansas? You know, there's been obviously a lot of uh, attention taken away on this issue by the chiefs and everything else going on in town. But I know this is uh, a battle in the state legislature in Topeka. Are we going to get that flat tax? How does it look right now? Well, it looks the the votes aren't scheduled yet, but it looks like the. Uh, the House has the votes to override Kelly's veto. Okay. The Senate is one vote short, and and they have 30 days from um, her veto to to take to try to override it. So I, I imagine the Senate is trying to convince one person to change their vote. And unfortunately, you've got a lot of uh, people who identify themselves as conservative Republicans who are on Kelly's side. Yeah, I know one of them is. Yeah, I was going to go back to Aletha, where you have the state senator, Rob Olson, who is an Aletha senator, who is on Governor Kelly's side on this. And I know that you think that's hypocritical. Why? Well, first of all, last year, Olson voted for the bill several times before he finally flipped his vote to prevent tax relief. He did it to support his his friend, Senator Dennis Pyle. You know, Dennis Pyle's the one who gave us Governor Kelly by running as an independent and then having the Democrats. This was all about political revenge against Senate leadership. They are upset with Senate President Ty Masterson. And so it's it's more important to them, kind of like the school system, it's more important that those two get their political revenge than Kansans get serious tax relief. Wow, uh, and and so this year Olson and Pyle went. To, they went to the governor's press conference to announce her tax bill with a lot of fanfare, which would provide a whopping hundred and fourteen dollars of relief to uh, married couples and like sixty bucks to single people. It's nothing, but they're on that side. And and Olson's argument is well. After I finally read the bill a few times, I discovered that it gives too much money to people with higher incomes, and that's not appropriate. So what does he do? He's turned around and introduced a property tax rebate bill that gives the most money to the people with the most, with the highest valued homes. It's wow. just absolute hypocrisy. Boy, well, let's see if they can get it done. Um, since, unfortunately, it looks like a couple of Republicans are going against this flat tax and they're going to go on the other side of this uh we'll see what senate leadership can do in trying to flip a vote somewhere else dave i guess that's the next step right and we'll go from there it is because i mean the flat tax bill is so much better than governor kelly's bill especially for low-income people Mm -hmm. um the the three hundred and forty thousand low-income people who today are paying income tax would be exempt under the flat tax bill. Everybody with low income is far better off with the flat tax bill than with Laura Kelly's bill. They don't want to talk about that. Uh, yeah. It's just Kelly has Kelly has a political philosophy of you know if you make more than sixty thousand dollars as a couple, you should pay this exorbitant high rate of five point seven percent. I mean, she wants she wants school teachers and police officers to be penalized for her political viewpoint. And what it really comes down to is we don't want to give income tax relief, real relief, because we want to have more money to grow government. Dave Trauber, Kansas Policy Institute. All right, Dave, keep them honest. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Pete. All right, there you go. Good job out of him.